Hi ELC families! Hello! We're so excited to have you back for another Sunday evening at the book club. Each month we're going to have a special theme where we'll focus our books around that theme to bring new ideas and feelings into your house. For September our theme is diversity. The AGCS community is so unique with our families and students and we really wanted to highlight each special trait that our students have. So for our third graders, our second and third graders, we're going to be reading chapter books. And of course, this can be for any of our students to enjoy. But our, our chapter books don't have many pictures in them. So I'm going to encourage you to sit back, maybe close your eyes and listen as we read, and build your own pictures of what the book looks like for yourself. So for this month, we're going to be reading Get Ready for Gabby, A Crazy Mixed Up Spanglish Day. The author is Marissa Montez, and it's illustrated by Joe Cepeda. Okay, so sit back and let's begin. Chapter 1, Boot Trouble. Expecting trouble? Mr. Fine's busy eyebrows nodded in one long furry caterpillar. He eyed my red cowboy boots. Red, my favorite color. Poppy says red is bold and sassy, like me. Mommy says I'm un hia picante, a hot chili pepper, which is also red. And in case you were wondering, I'm Marisa Gabriela Morales Mercado. At home, I'm Gabby. At school, I'm Marisa Morales. Mercado is mommy's last name, so I don't use it at school. Marisa. The boots, Mr. Fine waited for an answer. Well, I sat up straight. I thought there may be some problems today. I craned my neck to glare at Johnny Wiley. He sits a couple of rows back to the left and one to the right. Johnny was, Johnny was spiky, spiking up his hair. Today is crazy hair day. Once a year, we get to wear our hair in weird, wacky ways. It's fun. Somehow, Mommy had gotten my wavy brown hair into two high ponytail braids, one over each ear. You could tell Johnny thought he was so cool. His dark blonde hair was all spiked and sprayed blue and red on the ends. Boys love Crazy Hair Day. Most of them look like wacko space monsters. Johnny mouthed something. I knew what it was. My eyes scrunched up. He mouthed the words later. I made a, I'll get you later face. Maritza. My eyes snapped back to Mr. F. I flashed him my best good girl smile. Mr. F's long caterpillar eyebrows split back into two. They bounced high above his glasses. We've talked about this before. There are better ways to solve problems them with one's feet. My shoulders slumped. I nodded. Yes, Mr. Fine. Mr. Fine is the nicest teacher I ever had, but sometimes I don't think he remembers being a kid. I looked up at Mr. Fine. He's tall and thin, so he had to bend down to look at, to look at me eye to eye. Don't make me have to tell you again, but no buts. If you ever may aim one boot at another student again, I'll take them away and I won't give them back to you until the end of the day. I sank down at my desk and tucked my boots as far under my seat as they could reach. My favorite uncle, Tio Julio, sent me these boots. They have tiny stars and curly half moons carved in the red leather and were painted white. Red and white, my favorite color combo. Mr. Fine turned to the other students. Okay, class, take out a sheet of paper. As part of our new project, I want you to make a list of strange or interesting animals you'd like to learn about. Try not to choose a common pet or a farm animal. Billy Wong asked, what about Melvin? Good question, Billy. An iguana is a very interesting animal. Melvin is our class pet. Mr. F keeps him in a big aquarium at the back of the room. We measured Melvin once. He also 
He also, excuse me, he's almost two feet long, if you count his long striped tail. There was a lot of mumbling. A few kids said, cool. I glanced at Johnny, moved one foot forward, and quickly tapped the toe of my boot. I knew what I'd like to write at the top of my list. The animal that most looks like Johnny Wiley. Un zapato gigante. A big, fat toad. Chapter 2. I have a fly behind my ear. Mr. Fine kept talking. He was walking slowly up and down the rows of desks. For this month's project, we'll break the class into groups of three. Mr. Fine said, Can anyone tell me how many groups that would be? Mr. Fine likes to check our math skills whenever he has the chance. Luckily, I like math. What doesn't come easy to me, though, is spelling. All those letters and rules, I before E or E before I, as mommy says, ay, 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 ay. I raised my hand. So did one of my best friends, Jasmine Lang. She had sprayed the tips of her black curly hair, hot pink for crazy hair day. Jasmine's crossed her eyes at me. I swallowed a giggle. I'm really lucky my teacher lets her sit right next to me. Jasmine, Mr. Fine called on. Since there are 18 students in our class, that would be six groups of three. That's right, Jasmine, six groups. I crossed my fingers. Do we get to choose who's in our own group, Mr. Fine? Oops, I forgot to raise my hand. So real quick, I stuck it up in the air. Not this time, Maritza. Mr. Fine waved a sheet of paper. I've already made that decision. Groans filled the classroom. Quiet down, class. He used his I mean it voice. In real life, you won't always get to be in a group or with a team with your best friend. You need to get used to what it's like to work with all kinds of different people. I started to get a bad feeling about this. I raised my hand again. Yes, Maritza. Um, Mr. Fine, I began. I think I have the fly behind my ear. The class broke into giggles. Then Johnny said, a fly? Sure, flies love pizza. Maritza Pizza gets flies. Do you get fleas too? He started to scratch under his arm like an itchy monkey. Hey! I bolted towards Johnny. Before I got two steps, Mr. Fine blocked me. His eyebrows knitted into that long, fuzzy caterpillar again. He pointed to my seat. I sat down. Mr. Fine turned to Johnny. John, that will be enough. My cheeks sizzled. I clenched my teeth, crossed my arms over my chest, and stared straight ahead. I felt like I was bitten in one of Mommy's raw ajillos, or garlic. Steam whooshed out of my ears. What's this about a fly, Maritza? Mr. Fine asked behind my ear. I don't see anything. More giggles came from the class. One glance from Mr. F, and they all hushed. Now my whole face burned. It's what Mommy says when I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen to me. She says I must have the fly behind my ear. Mr. Fine nodded. Oh, I see. It's an idiom. From Puerto Rico? I shrugged. I wasn't sure what he meant. Mr. Fine turned to write it on the chalkboard. Then, you won't believe this. Johnny Wiley started hopping up and down at the aisle, doing his ick itchy monkey act. He was all bent over and scratching his under his arms. Maritza Pizza has flies, he whispered so Mr. Fine couldn't hear. Maritza Pizza has fleas. A few of the kids laughed. I glared at Johnny. He gave me his nasty, wily smile and sat down real quick before Mr. Fine could see him. Billy Wong, one of Johnny's buddies, gave him a high five. But it was under the desk, so I guess it was a low five. I turned around to look at my other best friend, Devin Suzuki. She sits right behind me. We were both wearing our hair almost the same way for Crazy Hair Day. We sprayed the braids purple. You couldn't really see it on my hair, but the purple was super bright on Devin's because it's a lighter brown than mine. 
Devin tugged on her right braid and winked. It's our secret. It's okay, sign. We signal with our hair whenever we know the other one is feeling bad. It made me feel better right away. I tugged my right braid back at her and gave her a half grin. On the chalkboard, Mr. Fine wrote the word idiom. An idiom, he pronounced the word slowly, is an expression, something people from a place or a country say a lot and it catches on, like the early bird catches the worm. He turned to the class. Can anyone give me another example of an idiom? Devin raised her hand. That kid has ants in his pants. She glared at Johnny. Mr. F didn't notice. Good, Devin. Anyone else? I grinned at Devin and gave my right braid a double tug. That means, cool, great job. Devin smiled so big I could see her braces. Devin has mental braces on her two front teeth to fill in the gap behind them. She must have been happy because she normally doesn't smile big enough to show her braces. She's very shy about them. Actually, she's very shy about everything. Basically, Devin's a very shy kid. Sissy Hoffer, not a good friend, raised her hand. She's as mad as a wet hen. Sissy was looking right at me when she said that. I just stared like I had no idea what she meant. That's right, Sissy, very good, Mr. Fine nodded. Sissy gave me a snooty smile and shook her blonde curls. Sissy doesn't do anything for crazy hair day. She can't stand and mess up her perfect curls. Apparently in Puerto Rico, Mr. F continued, when someone has a bad feeling or something is going to happen, people say, what's the expression again, Maritza? You have the fly behind your ear, I grinned. Want to hear it in Spanish? Please, said Mr. Fine. He gave me the go-ahead sign with a swish of his arm. Tienes la mosca detrás de la oreja. Mr. Fine knew a little Spanish, so he wrote the phrase on the board. Maybe we can share idioms from other countries during the school year. Back at his desk, he picked up the sheet of paper he had heard earlier. Now, for the six groups of three. First group, Billy Wong, Mike Patel, and Jasmine Lang. Group two, Sissy Hoffer, Johnny Wiley, and Maritza Morales. Group three, my eyes bugged out. I didn't hear the rest. Johnny Wiley and Sissy Hoffer in the same group with me working together? Caracoles, yikes. I knew I had the fly behind my ear. All right, we'll stop there for tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, I thought that was so interesting to learn a new idiom from Puerto Rico. I, I agree. Mrs. Johnson, do you have a favorite idiom? Um, I don't know. I got to think about that. How about you? I really like the idiom, dressed to the nines, because I think that's pretty interesting. Not many people use it anymore, mm -hmm. but it means to be really fancy. Mm -hmm. And how about this? Why don't you all at home think about your favorite idiom and uh, tomorrow when you come back to school or sometime next week when you see Mrs. Hendrickson or I in the hall, I will have thought of my favorite idiom and you can tell us what yours is. Have a great night, everyone. Make sure you get lots of sleep and we will be so excited to see you tomorrow morning. Have good a good night. night.